Oh my god. You know what? <laughs> Ow. I feel like I've done nothing. 3.15 a.m. I'm not gonna cry. Wait, am I stupid? What up, hooligans? It's Jennifer, and welcome back to Osos. Let me just put this in focus for you guys. Welcome back to Osos. So, I think it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We're definitely in a very weird and scary time right now with this whole pandemic. And I feel like I, as well as we, have a responsibility to do as much as we can to help out, whether it's just staying at home or donating. And since I have a background in, you know, sewing and DIYing, I wanted to help out in a way that I know how, and that is by making 2 million face masks by hand to donate to frontline workers. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're not gonna do that whole 2 million thing again. It was just a little throwback to when I did the making 2 million scrunchies video. That was, a, that was a rough time. But don't worry, you will still be able to watch me suffer because what I'm trying to do is make as many face masks as I possibly can with all of the fabric that I currently have. This will take me days and days and days, but the end result is for a good cause, so it'll all be worth it. I'll talk more about where these masks are going specifically later on in the video. Speaking of good causes, a portion of all the money made from this video, as well as my future videos for the next couple of months, will be donated. So your view is going to a good cause. So I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. For this video, I chose to donate to Food Banks Canada. So follow me along this arduous, strenuous, and definitely lengthy journey. Stay tuned to see if my hands fall off or if I lose my sanity. <laughs> I'm scared. I can see what's ahead and I don't like it. I don't like it. But you know what? Okay, I think we just have to get started. I'm stalling too much. Welcome. Oh, I kind of feel like I look like a news reporter right now. Oh, what is that, Bob? We're getting breaking news right now. I think they're saying stay inside. So, welcome to my crafting setup for the next 100 hours, probably. I'm gonna be testing out a couple designs because there are so many floating around and I'm just gonna see kind of like what's most efficient to make, but still making sure that they'll fit and work. Now for materials, we need fabric. I have a lot. Tell me why I'm out of breath from literally putting fabric on the table. However, CEO of Clean Transitions, am I right? However, the fabric that I'm primarily going to be using is this nanofiber fabric from Filthy. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Filthy for sponsoring this video. And I just wanted to let you guys know that money from the sponsorship will also be donated. But I was actually planning on doing this video anyway, so it was kind of perfect timing that they reached out. So I'll give you guys a little bit of background on Filthy. They make high quality, reusable, washable HVAC filters using patent, using, <laughs> Using patent, using, using patent, pa using pat, I'm not gonna cry. Using patent pending nanofiber material. And they're the largest supplier of nanofiber material for face masks. And this material has an efficiency rating of up to 95%, which is why it's a lot more effective than regular cotton fabric on sub micron particles. And Filthy has transitioned their manufacturing facilities to produce face mask material around the clock. If you're interested in learning more about the material, I'll leave a link down below with more info and if you're interested in checking out Filthy to make your own masks or masks for other people or to donate, you can click the link down below and use the promo code GENERATIONDIY for 10% off. Obviously, homemade masks are not a replacement for legitimate N95 masks and this material also is not a replacement for that, but it is safer than using just like regular cotton fabric from like a t-shirt or something. Let's make some masks. So I'm gonna try making all these masks first and then after each mask, I'm gonna have like a wham bam quick three minute mask making tutorial. Okay, so like I said before, I'm donating these masks to frontline workers through this organization called Canada Sews. And they have a couple different patterns on their site that they recommend using. So I printed out the pocket mask pattern. This one is really intuitive because it's to scale. For this, we have two different pieces that I have to cut out. So I kind of have high hopes. Well, 
I'm gonna link down below all of the patterns and tutorials that I used. Like I said before, I found this organization called Canada Sews and they have a bunch of different municipal or like regional sectors and I just joined my regional sector on Facebook. So if you live in Canada and want to help make some face masks, I would recommend going through Canada Sews. I asked the organizers if this fabric was okay to use and that was like kind of a process, but I got the okay to use this fabric to make masks. So if you're planning on making homemade face masks to donate, check in with the organization to make sure that the fabric or the pattern that you use is acceptable. Okay, so I have the two pieces cut out. Hello? How did I... Hello? Hello! Oh, there it is. You cheeky little monkey. Can you tell I've been watching a lot of Love Island? The next step is making ties. Oh my god, I've been working for half an hour already. I feel like I've done nothing. Like I could do, ooh, this could be like a cool combo. You know what? Okay, wait, wait. So I have these leftover strips of fabric from my scrunchie video. I'm gonna see if these are this right now. Oh my god, they're like almost perfect. Oh my gosh! The pattern is 20 inches. I think I'm probably at like 19 inches, but I think it'll work. Okay, whoa, my workspace is getting messy. Let me clean this up a little bit. Oh, me cleaning? Having an organized workspace? This is new territory. I now have my four strips of fabric and now, well, I, I have to look at the instructions actually. So it looks like I will need an iron. Oh, that's fast, all right. Oh good. Do not burn yourself, please. Amazing. <laughs> Got one, three more to go. I have two. Probably took me like 15 minutes to just iron out these four pieces. So that is quite time consuming. Now I'm gonna sew these. Ah! Okay, so I just sewed my first tie and I, I understand why you're supposed to use the same color now because my lines are just like not straight. But since I already did it for one, I kind of have to do it for the other three. So I'm gonna keep going. At this point, it has been an hour and I haven't even finished one mask yet. <sighs> All right, I now have my four ties. I feel like this is what's gonna take the most time. Now I'm going to move on to the actual mask pieces. I actually don't really have to hem this because it's not woven fabric, so it won't fray at all, but I'm just gonna follow the pattern just to be safe. Cool, I have the four ties on. Okay, I got it. Ow! Oh, I feel like I didn't really explain why I or like people are making face masks to donate. I mean, you guys probably know there's a huge shortage of N95 masks. So in order to make sure that doctors and nurses and medical professionals who are actually working in hospitals can have access to those, we should, you know, resort to other options. But obviously this isn't a replacement for actual medical equipment. What just happened to my voice right there? Am I going through puberty? Currently, when I'm making this video, there are over 100,000 requests for face masks and only 50,000 have been delivered. So I figure I have the skill, why not help out? I actually recently decided to start re-watching all of the Marvel movies. So I'm making face masks while watching Marvel movies. Sounds like a really fun Friday night. It's almost been two hours. <gasps> No, I'm literally fine. I'm literally fine. Okay, guys, check-in time. I finished my first mask. It's been two hours. I'm glitching. But anyway, this is what it looks like. It's a pocket mask, which means that it has a pocket so that you can put a filter in. Since this is filter material, I feel like you don't really need to add a filter in, which is great. And then 
this goes, I'm not gonna put it on. This like goes over your face and then you just like tie it in the back. That's the mask, I think it looks pretty good. Here's a little quick tutorial. First, print, cut, and assemble the mask pattern according to the instructions on the paper. I'll link the pattern down below. Trace piece A and B onto the fabric, which are 9 by 9 and 9 by 10.5 inches respectively. Then cut those out. Then take piece B and fold down half an inch twice along the top with the wrong side of the fabric facing up. Then sew along the edge. Do the same thing with piece A, folding down half an inch twice along the top but with the right side of the fabric facing up. Sew along the edge. Next, cut out four pieces of fabric measuring 20 by 2 inches. Fold down half an inch on the top and iron. Next, fold the fabric in half vertically and iron all the way down. Next, fold the raw edges to the center line we just ironed and fold again. Sew along the open edge of the entire tie. Do that to all four ties. Take piece B and mark where the ties will be attached according to the template with the right side of the fabric facing up. Next, attach the ties to the fabric with the raw side of the tie attached. Sew all four ties on. Mark where the fold will be according to the template and fold down. Next, place piece A on top with the right side facing up. Line up the bottom corners, pin, and sew along all three sides except for the top. Flip it right side out. Sew along all four edges, then place the pleat template on top and mark where the pleats will be. Fold the pleats down and pin. Sew along all four sides to secure down the folds and you now have your pocket mask. Alright, so the next pattern I'm going to try out is also a pocket face mask, but it claims to only take two minutes. You know, I have a feeling it's not actually going to be two minutes, but let's test it out. It seems to look pretty easy. You only need to cut out one piece. Well, 13. No, I can't. No. Well, well. I'm trying to figure out what's the most efficient use of this fabric. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait. No, I'm fine. Right? No. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, we have the piece. I just have to fold and sew. So this pattern calls for elastic rather than ties. So I think that's gonna save me a lot of time. I actually have elastic that is kind of wide. I basically cut it up into thinner pieces at the length that the video says. So I have a bunch of these elastics right here. I'm a little frazzle dazzled right now, I'm not gonna lie. But this is already seeming a lot easier. This still took me 25 minutes, but it's a lot faster than the two hours that I spent making this first one. But um, here's a quick tutorial on how to make this mask. Measure out a 14 by 8 inch piece of fabric and cut. Next, fold it with the right sides touching. Sew a 1.5 inch long hem on each side around half an inch from the edge. Shift the hem down around 1 inch and open the hem with your fingers. Iron if needed. Then take a 7 inch piece of elastic and we're going to attach it on the inside to the corners of the fabric with the ends of the elastic facing out. Pin down all four attachment points. Next, sew along the two open edges to attach the elastic and to close the sides. Then flip it right side out and fold three pleats with the folds facing the bottom on the outward facing side of the mask. Mark where the pleats meet or secure down with pins. Sew along all four sides to secure down the pleats. And now you have pocket mask version 2. So which one am I gonna commit to doing? I really wanna continue doing the faster one, obviously, but this one does feel a lot better quality. I'm gonna make some of both and see if I get faster at making this one or making this one. Let's do it. After getting used to the process, I started batch sewing and batch cutting so that everything would go by faster. Over the next couple of days, all I really did was eat, sleep, and make masks. <sighs> Not burn yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> it 
it's late in the day. It is, oh my God, it is currently 3.15 a.m. I've only made maybe like 15 masks so far, but I have a lot of batch material cut out, straps made. Hopefully I can assemble them quickly tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hi guys, it is uh, the next day. Ooh. Whoa. I actually just ran out of the filthy fabric, which is kind of unfortunate. I found a giant sack of fabric. So I'm gonna start making some fabric masks. <sighs> I'm literally fine. Honestly, I am having a lot of fun with it. I know it looks like I'm dead right now. I didn't get much sleep last night, but it's quite therapeutic because you kind of get used to the process. I have some cool patterned fabrics. This one looks really cool. I have this one. Where did I get these fabrics from? I honestly have no idea. They kind of were just like in my closet and I was like, oh, cool. I guess just being a DIYer, I just find random stuff in my closet and like maybe one day I'll find Harry Potter in there. I'm gonna keep making masks. This is how many I have so far. It looks like a lot, but I feel like it's actually not that many. But I don't know, I'm just gonna keep going. Eventually, I recruited my dad to come down here and help, and we kind of formed like an assembly line. So, shout out to my dad. Um, it's currently 2.39 a.m. Yesterday I worked until 5 a.m. So I'm honestly pretty tired. I'm like sort of satisfied with the number of masks that I made slash I am just like exhausted. <laughs> Hello guys, it is the next day and let's take a look at how many masks I made. Ta-da! I honestly have not counted yet how many hours I put in, but I feel like it's around 50 or so. It's been like five days. I know in the beginning I was like, I'm gonna use all the fabric that I have. That would literally take me like a month, I think. I still have more fabric, so I'll probably end up making more masks, but this is the amount that I decided to stop at for the video. I feel like it looks like a lot, but I feel like it's not actually a lot. I'm gonna say there's like 50, which is like in my mind is like kind of disappointing because I was aiming for like a hundred but let's just count it out and we'll see 6 13 19 30 35 44 51 You know, I'm like kind of disappointed in myself. I'm not sure why I'm feeling so disappointed. There's nobody telling me that I have to make like a hundred masks, but I think that was just like the goal that I had. But I think 51 is still a ton of masks. If you want to see me actually donate these masks and like go on that whole journey, I'm going to vlog about it on my vlog channel, Jen's Life, and I'll also do some stories on Instagram at Generation DIY. I think that if you have interest in sewing and crafting and that kind of stuff, you should definitely try it out and help make some masks look around for organizations near you that are looking for donations yeah i think it's just a fun way to help out i hope you guys are staying safe and healthy thank you guys so much for watching follow me on instagram at generation diy shout out of the week is right here that's pretty much it see you guys next time bye